In this presentation, we're going to generate reports. Those will include our financial statement reports, the balance sheet and the income statement, as well as other reports that will give us detail about the transactions that we had. And that will help us to kind of review our numbers and our practice problems, consider how to review numbers in practice, and possibly what kind of reports we might want to use if we want to do some kind of billing set, set up that we would build by transaction or by account that was affected. Let's zoom into it with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars company dashboard file. We're going to start off with our financial statement reports, those being the balance sheet and the income statement. So we're going to go down to the business, uh, the accounting, and then go down to the balance sheet. So let's open up that balance sheet. And then once it opens, we're going to right click on the tab up top. We're going to duplicate that tab. We're going to open up the income statement. So let's go back to the tab to the left. Let's go back to the accounting drop down. Let's scroll on down to that income statement or we're not really scrolling. Just going on down to the income statement. When that opens up, then I'm going to right click on the tab up top. We're going to duplicate that tab. So we got the balance sheet. We have the income statement. Those are the two primary reports that obviously we want to take a look at. Another report I would really keep in mind here because it's a lot easier to review quickly is a trial balance report. So a trial balance report, let's open that one up and we can do some comparing and contrasting as we go further in the course. We'll probably be bouncing over to the trial balance a few more, a little bit more often when it's appropriate to do so. So let's go to the accounting dropdown. Let's go to the uh, reports. Now, oftentimes they kind of put the trial balance off. Many, many accounting softwares do, do this, not just zero. They kind of stuff it down into the accounting section down here. Uh, which there, you know, you kind of assume that only a, an accountant would use. Maybe that you know the accountant at the year end would use that. No one else wants to use those reports, apparently. But that's not really the case. You know, the trial balance can be really useful. Now, the the reason that's the case, the reason they have it down here, most accounting software does, is is because it has debits and credits in it. But it also has a summary of all of the accounts in one section, being the balance sheet and income statement. So if you want to jump back and forth really quickly to account balances and back to uh, your data input. Trial balance, great report to have. So I do recommend bounce, you know, using it, get used to it. Even if you don't under, even if you don't want to deal with debits and credits or anything like that, it still has the account balances in it, and you can see how much shorter this is. So just compare this to the income statement and the trial balance and the balance sheet. This is a lot easier to bounce back and forth with. It doesn't have those subtotals, but that's okay. So when you check your numbers, this is probably the easiest one to check your numbers with. And it's probably the easiest one to check other people's numbers with if you're reviewing other people's data. We're going to right click and duplicate that. And then I'm going to open up another report and we're going to bounce back between these reports when reviewing. And this is going to be a transaction detail report, often a report that we want something like a journal entry report that's really good for internal use. Meaning if I'm trying to review someone else, if we're trying to check our work and it's practice problem, or if I'm trying to say like, how much should I bill someone? and count it not by hours, but maybe by transaction. What kind of report might I use for, for something like that? Let's go to the accounting dropdown. Let's go down to the reports and consider those options. And we're gonna go on down. We're gonna go back to that accounting section down here. And I'm gonna select the dropdown for the accounting section. And the one I like here is the journal report. So let's go ahead and open up the journal report. Now, normally I only, I only look at this in some software with the journal entries. But I like their journal report here. Now we entered all of our transactions in as of the end of um, last of December 2019. So December 31st, I'm just going to select that one day, December 31st, 2019. So there we have that. I'm going to run this. And then it gives us these transactions. I'm going to open this up a bit or scroll in. I'm holding down control and getting back up to that 125. That's where I like to be. And we have these transactions now they're in the form of debit and credit but if we zoom into it we can get more detail on them even if we didn't enter these with a journal entry so they show the debits and credits but they give us a, a good way to actually count all the transactions that happen as of this date right this one date i put this transaction in so again even if you don't know debits and credits and you're trying to maybe bill based on uh based on the number of transactions instead of hours then you can go through here or if you're reviewing someone's work and saying how long did it take to do something and you might want to report such as this and say, well, let me see, does this make sense? I mean, how many transactions are in there? And it's nice to see the journal entry too, because you can also see those types of accounts or transactions where it's only have two accounts affected. And possibly those accounts like this one where have more than two, uh, two affected because we had to enter the, in the inventory here and whatnot. And that could be useful too. Maybe you want to build by not just simply accounts because that's too simplified, but the, n the number of, uh, not by transaction, but by account because maybe... I, then under that system, you could say, well, this one was a much more complex transaction. 
and maybe you want to bill by by accounts that were affected as opposed to, to a transaction. So in any case, those are some options. I'm going to right click on this one. I'm going to duplicate this tab and then let's do some reviewing of them. We will analyze and then print these reports. Let's start off with the old balance sheet up top. So we're going to go all the way to the balance sheet. Now we had our balance sheet. We entered our balance sheet as of December 31st, 2019. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up just a bit. Is that where I, is that the one, two, five? That's the one, two, five. All right. And so obviously we have our, our checking account here. We have our inventory now tying out. You could tie out these numbers. If any of these numbers do not tie out, then you can obviously use the zoom feature. You can drill down on it to see what the issue is with it. Also just note that if anything doesn't tie out and you're in here as of December 31st, 2019, it may be a date issue. So you might want to try changing the date to a later time in time and seeing if the number then appears or any numbers change. If they do change, probably a date issue, then you want to drill down on the number, find whatever thing is changing, the date problem, and then you could go into and adjust it. All right? and you, could, you can actually adjust a lot of this, this data input uh, that we have in the system. So we have the uh, accounting, we've got the accounts receivable, the inventory, the computer equipment, and uh, the, the accounts payable, the credit card, the notes payable, and then the equity broken out between these two numbers. And if I check then our balances over here, I believe they tie out. Here's our beginning numbers. And so I think everything is tying out and the total equity is at the 85,396. Uh, so that's gonna be the 85,396 in the total equity and uh, assets and liabilities, 123,396, 123,396. So you note everything kind of washed out down here. Now we're going to start in the beginning of next time period. So our beginning balances are actually going to be as of January 1st, 2020. All the numbers will be the same except for the equity section down here, which just has the retained earnings. Now notice how nice it all rolled out into retained earnings. We don't have any kind of funny accounts. If you do this in, in QuickBooks and you use their be opening balance kind of setup, you'll probably end up with an account down here called opening balance equity because it's kind of telling you, hey, we forced some journal entries. Here, you don't have that because we didn't use any kind of forcing journal entries. We basically, uh, we, when we needed to enter a journal entry, we entered the journal entry and posted two sides to it and the other side go into retained earnings when appropriate. So we don't have to adjust any kind of uh, opening balance or any kind of funny stuff happening in that way. So there's gonna be our balance sheet. So that looks good, everything looks good there. Check your numbers, if, it, if they tie out, great. If not, check the date and then see if anything has changed. If you increase the date, if it does, then you may want to go in there and see if you can just simply adjust the date. And then I'm going to go to the income statement. Let's check out the old income statement. And if we check out the income statement as of 2020, nothing's in it. That's exactly what we want. Nothing's in it as of 2020 because we're going to start fresh from scratch. If I was to go in there as of 2019 and go into, I can just have one day because we entered everything in there as of the end of 2019. We can go on December 31st and update that. Then we have our, our data, but this data doesn't matter because that's in the accounting, the prior accounting system. If you want to look at that stuff, go into the prior accounting system here. We're starting in 2020 and that stuff just doesn't matter. We don't care about it. And so we're going to be going saying, Hey, this thing starts in January 1st, 2020. And there's, there's, and you could, you could go for the whole year, 2020, if you so choose and there's nothing in it at this point in time until we start entering data for the current year. So that's what we want. If anything's in the income statement as of 2020 on your side, you, then click on it, drill down on it, and it's probably a date issue. And you can go in there and modify, hopefully, the, the transactions and change the date. Then we'll go to the trial balance. Same kind of issue. The trial balance is, is giving us the same information, but a lot faster. This will be the easiest report to check, right? There's no subtotal. So if I go in as of 2019, We've got the checking account, the accounts receivable, the uh, inventory, the computer, the credit card, the accounts payable, the notes payable, the retained earnings, and then the sales and the miscellaneous. Why are these down here? Notice we have the balance sheet and the income statement, these two being income statement accounts, because those are combined together, you know, they're on, on uh, a trial balance, meaning this is kind of like the beginning balance. And these two items are the items that roll into it. These are the two items that were in that, uh, current value or the other section that broke out on the balance sheet. So if you subtracted those two out, I think that's that 55 or whatever that that was there. Now, if you if you then make the balance sheet as of 2020, these things will roll out 
to equity, as we saw on the balance sheet. So if I'm going to say, all right, what if I make this as of uh, January, I'm sorry, January of 2020, everything is the same, except now we only have retained earnings. We don't have any sale. We don't have any income statement accounts. That's what we want. This is a post-closing trial balance. We only have the balance sheet accounts. We don't have any temporary accounts as of yet. So that's what we have there. Check these numbers. These obviously look how much easier it is to check these numbers. No subcategories, no other stuff in the way. It it's all fits on one page here. You can take a look at it and check your numbers. Then uh, if that ties out, then we're going to go over to our journal report here. And like we say, if anything didn't tie out, then you can go to the journal report. Or even if it does tie out, then you want to consider the journal report just to consider how much work is done. Notice these reports don't really tell you how much work basically was done or what was done and when it was done. This report can give you that more detail and that could help you with your billing schedules if you decide to bill based on the amount of transactions as opposed to simply time, which is something I recommend, you know, considering. So then we have this just as of December 31st and here's going to be our transactions. They're broken out by the journal entry. Uh, so you could go through these journal entries and basically see if your journal entries tie into the into yours if they're in a slightly different order that's okay because they're all in there as of december 31st you could tie out the numbers and the accounts that are going to be affected on each one of them and then if anything isn't there if anything doesn't show up once again change the date try expanding the date range to go back in time and forward in time anything that pops in here that doesn't show as of december 31st 2019 it has a date issue you can then drill down in on it so for example if i was to go into some of these you might then ask you know the the good thing about this report is it gives you all the transactions and it gives you both accounts that are affected within them and so that's great for billing and to see how many accounts are affected and just to check your work the bad thing is it doesn't really tell us the exact form that was used it gives it, it everything to us in journal entry format and we can't really see the forms that were used just on the face of the report so what we can do is go through some of these, for example, and drill down on them. Uh, for example, this one was a sales item. So if I want to see, okay, what happened here? If I can, I can click on one of these items and go into the detail for it and say, was it entered with a journal entry? No, it wasn't entered with a journal entry, I don't believe, right? And I want to look at the 2019. So here it is in 2019. I'm going to select the data. I'm going to drill back down on it again. And then now we're going to see our detail for it. So we have uh, the three invoices that are that are making up that uh, twenty thousand five. So I'm going to I'm going to click on the invoice here. Then let's select that invoice. And then here's the actual uh, invoice. So we can drill down on the invoice, and we have that uh, eight thousand in the invoice. Now, if you needed to adjust something, if the date was off or something like that, and you needed to adjust the date, you can go to uh, the options up top. Uh, you have the repeat, you can void it, you, if you know, delete it and then enter something, the correct one again, which is probably the more proper way to do it, copy, or you can edit it, right? So if you wanted to edit it and you want to be careful with the editing, especially with the dates and whatnot, but you do have that option. You can go in here and, and, and do some editing to it in that format. So there is that. Let's go then back. I'm going to go back to our report. Let's see if I try not to go past it up top. So there we have it. So, and, and notice I, here, I'm just seeing the 8,000. So again, when I broke down into it, you, you saw all the invoices, including the three 8,000. So here's the other invoice that we made for the seven, five. Here's the invoice down here. Here's going to be the, the inventory stuff. These are going to be the fixed asset that when we put the assets on, not the fixed assets, the inventory assets on the books here, I believe. And, uh, so inventory assets. So you can drill down and, and look at these, look at these reports here. It's a useful report to have. Let's go ahead now and export these reports as we've done in the past. We're going to export them in PDF format and we'll put them into our Excel uh, file as well for this section. So I'm going to go back over to the balance sheet. We're going to do our standard kind of process here. Now you could go through and, and format these. I could go to the report settings and my, I typically have been taking off the decimals. So I might want to do that but I, I might not do that on all of them. I'll just, you know, we'll go through our custom here. So I'm then going to go to the export. We're going to export it as a PDF first. And then I'm just going to go into where we want to put it. And I want to put it into this folder. I'm going to call it uh, section six. So section six folder. And I'm just going to grab that one and pull it over into our folder. 
Then I'm gonna rename it. So I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna rename it. I'm gonna call this a balance sheet. Now I'm gonna do all the PDFs first and then I'll go into the Excel files and that might make it easier. So I'm gonna to go to the income statement, do the same thing. I'm, I'm not gonna reformat, take off the decimals. I'm just gonna print this thing out. So we're gonna export it as a PDF file and then I'll drag it over in the same fashion. So I'm just gonna grab that one. I'm just gonna pull it over into our uh, folder over here. Then I'll rename that. I'm going to right click on it and uh, rename it. And I'm going to call this an income statement like that. All right. And then let's do the same for the trial balance. So I'll go on over to the trial balance and let's go ahead and export that as a PDF file. It's going to open up down here. Once again, I'm just going to simply drag that on over to our folder again. So we'll take that, drag it on over. And then I'm going to rename that. I'm going to re right click and rename and call that a trial balance like so. And then we'll do it uh, one more time for our transaction detail report. So we're or the, or the journal report and we'll scroll down to the bottom here. I'm going to say export and I want to export to a PDF. So a little bit different of a format for this type of report to, to export it, but got the same features that we're looking for here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that one pull it into our uh, our folder over here, grab it, pull it into the folder. And then I'm gonna rename that one. Oh, something funny happened. And then I'm gonna right click and rename it. And I'm just gonna call this, I think it was a journal report, something like that. So, right, that's what it was. Now, now we have those, we can attach those four to a, a email or something like that, or we could print them individually, but we'd have to collate them or we can put them into a folder. So I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm just gonna say section six reports and we can grab those then and we can put them into our folder. I can grab those, put them into our folder and we can right click and zip the folder if we so choose, compressing it and that'll make it so we can attach it to an email. Uh, or we can do the our other method which is to to export everything to Excel and make one file in that fashion, that'll make it easier to print as well if we need to. So I'm gonna open up an Excel file this time. Let's open up Excel with the balance sheet. I'm back over to the balance sheet, by the way, in case you missed that, I'm back over to the balance sheet on the right side. We're gonna be opening up that Excel file for the balance sheet. Here it is. Now I'm gonna uh, copy and paste this to another tab. I'm gonna make another tab and I'm just gonna call it BS for the balance sheet. Go back to the first tab. I'm just gonna copy this entire thing by collect, selecting the triangle up top or control A, right click and copy it. Bring that to the balance sheet tab. I'm gonna paste it. You gotta be in A1 in order to do so and paste it as we've seen in the past. Bring it back up over here to 150%. And that'll give us this formatting. We'll see in the other reports, it gives us our grid lines back. I'm gonna go back to the first tab. I'm gonna delete it, right clicking on that tab and simply delete it like so. Then I'm gonna save this to where we want it to be. I'm gonna to go to the file tab, save as, browse, and I wanna put this into my section six folder. So I wanna go browse please, cause I like to tell you where I wanna put it. And then we're gonna put it into this folder. There it is. So it's gonna go right there and I'm gonna call this not balance sheet, but section six reports because i'm going to put them all on this one workbook section six reports like that and then i'm going to keep it open and then go to our other reports let's go to the income statement now open that one up and go ahead and export this to excel as well and i'm going to open this up i'm not going to save this one because we just want to grab what's in it and put it into our balance sheet report so I'm just gonna open up this one. I'm gonna enable the editing on it. So uh, actually this one doesn't have anything in it. We were just proving nothing's even in there. So I don't really need that one. I'm not gonna do that one at all. Not doing it. And then let's go up to the other one. What's the other one we had, which is gonna be the trial balance. That's a good one. We probably should make one for 2020 and one for 2019, but I'll just do the 2020 one because that's our beginning balances. So I'm gonna go ahead and export the trial balance. Again, I'm not gonna save it, but just open it. So we'll open that one up. We're gonna copy the detail, put it into this one. So I'm gonna enable the editing so I can copy it. So it's enabled. I have, I have the ability, I am able to uh, do stuff to it. 
then <clears throat> I'm going to take the whole thing, copy it, or I can have Control A and then copy it by right clicking and copying. Going to go back over to, to this tab. I'm going to add another sheet. Going to go up to A1 and paste it. We're in A1 and paste. I'm going to rename it to the TB or just trial balance. I'm going to call it TB for short. Bring this back up to 150% so we can see it at the 150. Can't see these two tabs. We can highlight these two tabs and make them a little bit wider so like we can see the numbers. That's what those little grid things. Now, if we got rid of the decimals, we wouldn't even have had to do that. But there's our information. Let's see if it fits on a page. Let's go back to the page layout tab over here. Does seem to fit on a page, so we'll keep it at that. There's going to be our page break. All right, let's save this and let's do this to, to another one. I don't need this one I can close. Don't need that. That's going to confuse me. I don't like being confused. So I'm going to go then to the journal and do the same thing. I'm going to scroll down way to the bottom of the journal where we have this export button. This time exporting it to an Excel sheet. Again, I'm not going to save it, but just open it because I just want to take that information, copy that information, put it onto the other workbook where we put the other information. So I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to enable the editing for it. So it, it allows me to do stuff to it. And then I'm going to put my cursor and copy the whole thing by triangle up top or control A and right click and copy. Minimize this one. We're going to make a new tab over here. And I'm going to double click on it. Rename journal report. Something like that. And I'm going to put this in A1 and right click and paste it the first one like that. And so there we have that. And let's bring it back up to that 150, 150% so we can see it a little bit better. Check it, see if it fits on a page by going to the page layout and then back over to the normal view. There's our page break. Looks like it's all fitting on one page, although we do have some cutoff kind of stuff going on over here. We might want to make like column A a little larger maybe. Might make things better. Let's do something like that. We got a lot of room. Could probably bring that out a bit. All right, to the page break even. All right, that's good. That looks okay. We'll keep it at there and then I'm going to save this and then we're going to print it using the cute PDF printer to a PDF file. So we're going to go to the file tab. We're going to go down to the printing options. You could then print this to a printer with it all being collated, but you need to set it up so it's not on the active sheet, but rather the entire workbook. Entire workbook now have four pages on it. The balance sheet, then the trial balance, then the uh, journal report and then the second page of the journal report. So now you can print this all out and you can print multiple copies and not have to collate them in this fashion or you can use the cute PDF printer which is a free kind of tool that we have that we've discussed in the past. It's worked well for me. You can search it out and print it as a PDF file. So I'm going to go ahead and print it in the PDF file format. So we'll print that and it's going to say, hey, where do you want me to put this? I think it's going to say that. It's going to ask me. I'm paraphrasing. But it's going to say there where we want it. And then I'm going to put it onto our desktop where my folder is. So I'm putting in my X0 and Section 6 folder. And sec I'm going to keep the name. So we'll save that. And that should open up there. And then this is what we have. So we, can, we, can, we got our folder with our four reports in it that we can give to someone. We've got our Excel file we can print from, or now we have our PDF file that we can open up and just check that out and admire it. So there's our balance sheet, there's our trial balance, and there's our journal report, which has two pages. That's beautiful.